Bancroft and welcome to the show. It is time once more to create a little order from the chaos of some random letters and numbers. That's the challenge for our contestants tonight. But first, we'll say hello to the team who'll help them do it. And first up, the mathematician with a methodical mind, Lily Cerner. Hi, Richard. When you're solving maths problems, Lily, do you think you have a, a methodical mind? Oh, without a doubt. I'd... I've trained my mind to think that way and um, I guess it comes also a bit naturally to me. But there are those people who seem to be able to take great big complex maths problems and just kind of get the answer, you know, with, without anything along the way. Well, the thing about maths is that you always have to prove whatever you come up with and um, it would be like our contestants saying, yes, I have the, the target number of 320. <laughs> That's with, right. Without... My, my answer is exactly the same as the big one yeah. up on the board there. <laughs> without, without any proof of how they came to that conclusion. So lots of proving, lots of method tonight. Good to see you, Lily. Thank you. And organising enigmas from A to Z, David Astor. <laughs> I've always thought you were a little bit enigmatic, though. <laughs> Actually, on the word enigma, um, that was a uh, code name for a code-breaking operation during World War II, and our crossword compilers were readily recruited as uh, being code-breakers, in fact. How extraordinary. A life of espionage mm. could await you. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, David. Let's move along in a very orderly fashion as we meet our two contestants tonight. And uh, firstly, our new carryover champion, Daniel Drum, who's completing his PhD in solid state physics. Hello, Daniel. Hi, Richard. Now, we heard last night that you've recently had a, uh, a paper published in the scientific journal. And what was the paper about? Well, the paper was on a particular defect in diamond involving a xenon atom. Now, these defects are relatively simple to think about. You just take a couple of atoms out and you put something else in and maybe a little bit of a hole. So and by changing a diamond in this way, you can make it more useful for what sort of application? This idea of making defects in, in, in any kind of semiconductor is the basis for all of the modern electronics. Fascinating work and important work. Good to have you with us, Daniel. And here to challenge Daniel tonight is Samuel Hastings, a lawyer, university lecturer and business manager. Hello, Samuel. Hi Richard, how are you? Very well, thank you. Now, your university lecturing, what sort of areas do you cover? Yes, I'm lecturing in both uh, criminal law and trial advocacy. I'm a, a lawyer, obviously, by training. Now, when you talk about trial advocacy, is that actually the process of teaching students how to stand up in court and, and literally present their case? Yes, that's right. It's the art of advocacy. So, um, how to prepare your case, um, strategy, uh, and then finally delivering the case uh, in court. So if those students are actually very clever, does it necessarily mean that they're going to be good lawyers in court? It doesn't necessarily correlate. You can be very intelligent in terms of being able to work with the law, but your presentation skills may not be um, up to the same standard. So it's all about a balancing. Although if they've been to your lectures, they'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> good luck tonight anyway. So please make them very welcome indeed, our contestants tonight, Daniel Drum and Samuel Hastings. <laughs> We respect tradition on this show, and we always start with the letters game. Contestants have 30 seconds to create the longest word that they can from the selected letters. And Daniel, to continue tradition as our carryover champion, get the ball rolling, please. Uh, can I have a consonant, please? You can. Let's start this night with N. And another consonant? S. Another consonant? L. And a vowel, please? O. Another vowel? E. And a vowel? I. And a consonant? T. Another consonant, please? N. And a vowel. And last letter, O. Thank you, Lily. Here's our first clock. <laughs> First word for the night, how many for you? Uh, seven, thanks. That's a very promising start. And uh, what about you, Samuel? I had a five. Let's go with that five first. I had moles. And your seven, Daniel? Moisten. Moisten. Nice start, David. 
It which whistle will. Uh, good, good play, Daniel. And um, it's actually very tempting when you do see a five or a six-letter word in those first few letters to actually lock it in. But uh, I encourage you uh, just to look beyond that, um, you know, that sort of six barrier to find moisten or to find emotions as a possible eight. Which is what you did. <laughs> very nicely done. So, a good start for Daniel, seven points. Very nice start, so let's move on with some more letters. And uh, Samuel, this time, you to choose. Can I please have a consonant to start with? You can. C. And another, please. N. And another. G. And a vowel, thank you. A. And another vowel. E. And a consonant, please. P. And another consonant, thanks. D. Uh, and a vowel, thank you. A. And uh, one more vowel, thank you. And last letter, E. And 30 seconds. Selection, Samuel. How did you go? I had uh, five letters, Richard. Five, and Daniel? Six. So your five first, please, Samuel. Uh, paged. And Daniel? Panged. Panged. Now that's an interesting one, David. You've got a, that, that slightly worried look. Yeah, I may be prescient here because I just double checked that word panged, and in fact, I have it here uh, open at the dictionary. Pang is a sudden feeling of mental anguish, but it is not a verb. So therefore, the past participle I can't pass, and it takes us back to Samuel. Paged is good for five. Well done. Um, what did you come up with, Doug? Encaged. A rhyme as a possible seven. Nice work. But well done, Samuel. Five points. Well, we move now from challenges alphabetical to numerical with the numbers game. It's time to get methodical in that lily-like way. And, Daniel, could you choose first, please? Could I have two large and four small, please, Lily? Thanks, Daniel. Two large and four small. And our numbers are seven... Six, two, five, and the two large, 25 and 100, and the target to reach is 422. Thank you, Lily. Good luck with the target. Daniel, our first numbers for the night. How close did you get? Uh, I didn't this time, I'm afraid. No luck? OK. What about you, Samuel? Oh, 423. 423. That's nicely done. Just one off the target. Can you take us through your method, please? Yes, certainly. Uh, so 100 multiplied by uh, 6 minus 2. 100 by 6 minus 2, which is 4. It's 400. Is, is 400. Uh, plus the 25. Add the 25. Uh, it's 425. Minus 7. Minus... Is 418. Minus the 7. Uh, and plus the 5 is plus 418. Five. Uh, 423. 423. So, just one off the target. Nicely done. Did you get there precisely, Lily? It was a tough one this time. I think I, I didn't get any better than 423. So, well done to Samuel. Seven points. That means Daniel's on seven. Samuel's taken the lead on 12 points as we head into our first break and a first word mix for you tonight. Poi ropes. And the clue this time, Muriel's spit. Back after the break. Yeah. 